Hey everyone, Daniel with Serenity Knives. I've got my guy Nick. We are going to be bringing you something new. I know you guys have seen the weekly grind with what we do in shop, making our own knives, but another side of Serenity is we have a retail side. So we've got various brands through folders and kitchen knives. Today we're going to be covering folders and one of the biggest brands we have, Benchmade. So without further ado, we're going to go jump right into it because we've got a bunch of knives here and we just want to try and make this as quick as possible. So. Starting with our discontinued knives, we've got the Mini Thai Mono Lock. I'm going to throw this over to Nick to give you some stats and we'll talk about it. Yeah, so this thing's got a 3.24 inch blade and uh, it's a titanium frame lock, M390 for the blade. Sorry, I forgot about that. It's 7.46 inches open and 4.2 inches closed. It's just a, your average size DDC. It's kind of their attempt on a frame lock or a Sapenza. It's pretty cool. Right-handed only, pocket clip is not reversible. It is milled though. You know, uh, reversible pocket clips are a big thing for Nico, him being left-handed. It does have tip up or tip down carry, but Nico's right, it does not have the other side for a left-handed carry. And I agree, this is one of those knives that looks like an attempt at a Sebenza because it's titanium and it's a frame lock. It's just one of those things that I kind of look at and go, this is an attempt from a company at a Sebenza. And we'll see that with other various brands as we move on. So the Thai Mono Lock discontinued, but here at Serenity Knives, guys. On to the next one, we've got the Vector. Now the Vector is an assisted knife. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into it because Nico's over here got the stats, but we've got a cool compound grind. So without further ado, what do we have here as far as stats, Nico? Yeah, so this one's a G10 with an aluminum bolster. It's an assisted access lock. So you just have to barely touch that flipper tab. It's got a blade length of 3.6 inches with a compound grind hollow, and then it's a full flat up top. You got a really cool swedge. It is in S, uh, 20 CV and it's got a 4.82 inches closed and overall length of 8.4. It is a reversible pocket clip. It's a pretty beefy knife. It's a bit of like a, a workhorse, definitely a specialty. Um, I know you like the reversible pocket clip just so you can always make it left handed. One of my favorite things about this knife isn't so much the compound grind, but I love this bolster look. It's one of those classic things uh, on knives that if you put a nice cool metallic bolster, it adds a little bit more class to it for me. Uh, love the G10, not a fan of the color, but Benchmade has a variety of different colors that I do like. There's also a lock on the back of here, so uh, another one of those discontinued knives that we have, the Vector. 496 and we've got our last one right here this is going to be the 62 bally saw i'm gonna try and flip this without cutting myself so i did that pretty successfully thank god but yeah so we've got this guy right here and let me get him locked up and over to nick for the stats yeah so this guy is a 9.2 inch overall length it's a little bit longer as belly songs typically are it's got a blade length of 4.25 inch and this is MD2. It is stainless steel and it's 4.875 inches closed. Pretty sweet. This is definitely your classic style ballet song. It looks very representative of Benchmade's original pieces. It's kind of where butterflies got popular with that aesthetic. And yeah, it's a classic. 100%. Um, flippers love this guy. It's one of those classic designs. Like Nick said, it's where uh, Benchmade started with the ballet songs, and that's just one of those classic, everyday uh, ballet songs that are just top-notch. All right, guys, that's going to be it for our discontinued knives, meaning the ones that we have in stock but are no longer being sold by Benchmade. We're going to get straight into the stuff that is currently being produced by them. Uh, right here, we've got a cool little tube blader, which is something that uh, Benchmade doesn't do too often. This here is the Weekender, and it's got one of my favorite handle materials on it. So on the nick for all the stats there. Yeah, this is the 317-1. So it's got the OD green micarta with the little orange pivot. Uh, spacers, caps, I forget what they're called. Spacer caps. It's got a clip point for the main blade, and that one is 2.97 inches long and a 1.97 inch little drop point, kind of like a pencil sharpening blade. And overall length, it is 7.05 inches if you just have this one open, and then 6.05 inches if you just got this guy. Now, is this a back lock or a slip? It's a slip joint. I saw by the way. Slip joint, and it actually has this little bottle opener in the back, too. So, awesome. 
cool everyday knife. It's got that traditional style as far as that two blade trapper, also it being a uh, slip joint. So no lock on here, guys. It's one of those things that you are the safety for this knife. Uh, you don't want to go back on it with your hand in front of it like so. You want to make sure that you're cutting forward with this so that way it stays compressed against the spine. I'm a big fan of this micarta. Uh, the orange kind of makes it pop, but the cool thing about this canvas micarta, guys, is it's one of those workable materials that the more you use it, the more sturdier, durable it becomes, the grippier it wears into. It gets a patina on it, so it starts to look really cool, um, but this is one of the cooler materials that Benchmade uses. I keep opening and closing this, but the Weekender, that is what we have for right there, guys. Now, we'll go ahead and get into the Barrage, and I will bring this assisted guy out, and on over to Nico for the stats. Yeah, so the Barrage is one of their kind of classic everyday carry assisted knives. It's got dual thumb studs, it's an axis locked, and it does have a safety on the back. It's, uh, I actually forget what the handle material is. It feels like an FRN. Black Valox. Never heard of that yeah. before, but it must be like Ribery or FRN. It's one of the lighter weight materials. It does have full liners and a black back spacer. Also has a reversible pocket clip. It's just that kind of classic drop point, spear point. And did you cover the blade steel in that one? No, it's 154CM. 154CM, a stainless steel. We use in our knives CPM 154, which is one of our favorite stainlesses to use. CM 154 isn't a bad one. The CPM is just a little bit more durable. These uh, assisted by uh, Benchmade are super snappy. You don't have to do much for them to come out. Every now and then they'll put a safety on some of these guys. Um, so if you're one of those guys that are real big about them, this has that and the access lock allows you for ease close. Um, just one of those everyday carry knives. And that Valox, I think is just something they use as like their proprietary plastics. A lot of different companies have names for whatever they're using as far as handle materials. But in the best way I can describe it is a sturdy plastic. That's about it, guys. Uh, that is the Barrage 580. And I apologize, I'm not covering all the names here. Uh, I mean numbers, but there is a lot to all of these, so we're just going to try and get to them and cover what we can. Make sure you're commenting down below to let us know what we're missing, uh, and we'll try and make do based on that. So now we've got the Arcane 490, another one of those, oh this is axis assisted, it's got a lock right here guys, so if it's put down you're not going to lock, uh, I mean bring this knife out. But the cool thing about these axis assisted is once you push this guy down, oh no, that's not it. So I lied. It's a flipper assisted. It's hard for me to really differentiate sometimes which one of these is an axis assisted and just a regular flipper assisted, but this is a flipper assisted. The Arcane, I'll go to Nico for the stats and shut up. <laughs> I definitely spend a lot more time with the knives than Daniel does. So. I'm a little bit more familiar with some of this stuff. It's S90V, it's got aluminum scales, it does have a reversible pocket clip. It is a very sleek knife. This is one of my favorites when I first came in, but it is slick. So if your hands are sweaty, it's kind of slippery. Uh, overall length of this guy is 7.72 inches with a blade length of 3.2 and then closed it is 4.52 so again kind of like the mini time monologue kind of like a lot of their knives it's just a good size for being able to use it and pocket it without noticing it in your pocket um the handle material on here is one of benchmates kind of staples that i like to give them credit for it is t6 aluminum you'll see it on the osborne you'll see it in a couple other uh, knives they anodize and paint them which are really good vibrant colors this one's a black so i'm not too ooh and awed about it but it's a very durable material it's one of those things as you use as well the patina comes along it starts to wear and look real cool so without any more of ado the arcane 490 guys it's assisted knife that we like to have and use in here as well on to one of the cooler knives uh, with Benchmade, carbon fiber with one of my favorite colors, red uh, thumb stud. This is the Mini Freak. Yeah, so the Mini Freak, you might know the Super Freak, the big one. This is the little guy. It's got carbon fiber uh, cart liners like the Bug Out and the Osborne, so they're hidden. 
and a lot smaller, it reduces the weight. This one's got an S90B blade, does have a reversible pocket clip like most Benchmade knives do. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice little everyday carry, especially if you're gonna go somewhere a little bit dressier. Kind of looks good. You know, cool thing about this guy, and it does have red back spacers as well, that carbon fiber makes it really nice and lightweight. But one of the really good things about this is it's kind of one of those underestimated knives. I think other than the usuals that, that get sold in our in our shop, this guy gets kind of snagged up a lot. I've seen this guy kind of come, come and go pretty quick. Um, not one of my favorites just because it's a little small for my hand, but a lot of people do use it for that small everyday carry. So yeah. the Mini Freak, really cool carbon fiber. I love the lightweightness of this knife. Um, and it's just one of those really great EDCs that I feel are underrated because a lot of people do like it. Um, it's just not one of my niches, that's for sure. And it's just over seven inches open, just over four inches closed. Right on. All right, guys, so a little bit of an upgraded, cool Bally song here. Super lightweight. It is the Titanium 85 Bally song. Um, I'm going to try and cover some things in here, but all I'll tell you right now is the machining, machining, machining is super cool on this knife. Not just the handles, but that blade as well. I know you guys see that cut out um, and super lightweight for a Bally song. Yeah, so this is the, actually the only Bally song they produce right now. And it is integral billets of titanium for each handle. So you may see the price and be like, whoa. But it takes a lot of time to mill this thing. And that's kind of what makes it cool. Um, yeah, it's got a S30B blade. It's a drop point, kind of a classic drop point, very reminiscent of some of their earlier stuff with a little bit of touch. And then it has this cool uh, like pressure latch that opens when you squeeze it yeah you know um and just in case you guys are like me who don't really understand the whole integral milling uh aspect of this just understand that the machining behind here is why the price is so high on this guy for a regular valley song and that's because like nico said these are both right here both of these guys are just one piece of titanium. And what I mean by that is this started out as a block and everything was milled out by the machine. So it wasn't two pieces of titanium smacked together uh, and then two pieces of titanium smacked together to make one side of each handle, which is one of those machining things that people appreciate when they see and understand. Um, but it is a really cool lightweight ballet song. If I got into ballet songs, I would fork the money over for this guy because it's just so cool and a great machining uh, kind of advocate for what they do with titanium nowadays. So that is the 85 titanium ballet song, guys. On to our next one. This is probably an assisted one because I'm looking at a uh, lock right here. I'm going to go with this flipper instead of the axis and look as bad as I did earlier. So. Boom, perfect, that worked. The 495 Vector, guys. I really like this blade shape. Super thin, so that means it's slicing all day. Got a lock on the back. That helps you out in case you feel a little bit bad about safety. And I love the texture right here. I'm gonna hand this over to Nico for all the stats. Yeah, so this guy's got a 3.6 inch blade. It is 8.42 inches overall length and closed it is 4.82. G10 scales, got full steel liners reversible pocket clip has that safety on the back like you said so if you want to put it in your pocket it won't open if you're afraid of it opening um, it's just another workhorse of theirs it's a bigger dude definitely capable and you know we're covering and just kind of bypassing a lot of these steels but like Nico said this being a workhorse and s30v it's becoming one of those staples of, of what benchmade does a while back they used to do a lot of D2, which is one of my favorite blade steels, and you'll hear me just go on about that, but S30V is becoming their staple. So yeah, definitely a workhorse, definitely something that's gonna hold and be able to, to stay sharp with you for a good amount of time. All right guys, that's covering a lot of the individual knives we have here. From here on out, we've got a couple of families. We're gonna take a bunch of them at a time and we're gonna run through them. You guys probably know what this one is here. I don't know how long the Osborne's been. You know, I feel like I knew at one point, but then I feel like I just heard a different year. So it was like, first came out in 2000 or something, but I thought it was an 80s knife, I'm not sure. And so- It was the first, after the 780, it was the first knife to have the access lock off. 
Right. And Osborne, uh, great maker guys, got into Benchmade and came out with this knife. I would say other than the bug out and other than the mini Crooked River, at least at Serenity, the Osborne's the next big thing. Or, I mean, depending on the day. Those, those three knives, yeah, for sure. they swap out between first, second, and third all the time. And so we've got a couple of them here. We've also got some other ones in another class that we'll show you later. But we're going to start over here with the mini Osborne 945BK-1. Um, this one has a really small handle compared to the regular Osborne's. A lot of people have been liking it. I'm not a huge fan because the Osborne just one of those knives I feel you don't need to do much to make it any better other than maybe do some cool blade uh, steels and colors. But the mini Osborne, I really like the blue liners on that one though. Yeah, so this is black G10 with blue G10 inlaid. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's pretty sweet looking. And blue barrel spacers for the little extra pop. So these guys are an S30V. That's kind of the typical blue class steel. Um, it's got a 2.92 inch blade and the open length is 6.76, definitely smaller than your typical average knife. And then 3.8 inch is closed. Reversible pocket clip, just a classic. And before we even uh, kind of get into the next one, just read those stats off for me one, and one more time because with this one, you're getting the same stats as 30 feet, but we're gonna have, we'll talk a little bit about the colors here. Go ahead with the stats again. Yeah, so 2.92 inches blade length, 6.76 open, and then 3.84 closed. But then this one's got the classic Osborne aluminum. Yeah, so the 945 Mini Osborne, once again, that, uh, and he's got the full size one right there. The T6 aluminum, my favorite material that Benchmade does. I really like not only the color on this guy, but the feel. Uh, the Arcane, like Nico was saying earlier, it's a real slick uh, anodization on that one, so it doesn't make it as good in the hand, but this one right here is one of my favorite. Uh, the full size, of course, is probably the staple that I would go to if it was mine. Um, they both have really cool purple back spacers. And I apologize guys, if you can't see this now, we'll end up getting a close up cam or some sort of different way to see these knives up close and personal. But you've got the Osborne's mini Osborne here and we'll get into the full size now with this guy being the staple. This is the first one that came out, right? The very first mm -hmm. rendition of the Osborne. So go ahead with the stats on that one. It was a little different originally. Right. I think it had like a 154 CM blade and I don't know, but not too much has changed over the years with this guy. Just very ergonomic, it was designed by Warren Osborne. He is a Texas rancher, I believe. Just how I sell a lot of these, because us Texas boys, we do like Texas stuff. It's a cool knife, I really like it. It's got that reverse Tonto blade. I don't know how they came up with that name, but it's a good one. It's, it's uh, beefier at the tip, so you really can puncture things. I don't recommend prying with your knife. It will inevitably break, but if you were gonna attempt it, this is did you, not a bad one for it. Did you cover the blade length on those? No, oh. I did not. Go ahead. The blade length is 3.4 inches on this guy as opposed to like the 2.9792 on the little ones. Right. And then the overall length is 7.87 with a closed length of 4.47. So. Right on. So classic Osborne here, guys. Um, my favorite color Benchmade does on the T6 aluminum. Uh, reversible pocket clip, but you can't go tip up, tip down. Doesn't matter if you're Nick here because all it matters is if you can switch it over to the left side. The other one we have here is the 940 dash. I'm gonna go one. This here is gonna be really cool, lightweight carbon fiber. Same stats, uh, so same blade material as far as, as far as, uh, S, no wait, this is S90V and this one is S30V. So S90V here, really, really higher end stainless. I think, do you have an S90V? I do not. Okay. I don't either. I'm a D2 fan, but SMDB is one of those higher end stainlesses. I'll give this over to Nico for any other stats that I missed and didn't cover. Well, it's got carbon fiber scales. I don't know if you said that, but it's got blue <laughs> standoffs. Um, very lightweight. It's different from the original in the sense that it has those standoffs so you can just kind of blow whatever gunk builds up in there. The original had that pretty sweet, slim, purple backspacer. That is a good uh, little tip, guys. When your knives are open like so, 
Uh, it makes cleaning and keeping stuff out of the inside of the knife a lot easier, unlike the original. The original's got the flare and the color, but that one right there, along with this guy, has got some openness to keep the gunk out. Uh, and so that is the 940-1, and now we've got the 940-2. Yeah, so that was the second Osborne they came out with, the carbon fiber s 90 b Then they came out with a little bit more... Uh, Less pricey version, simplified the scales, yeah, but keeping the uh, open backspacer uh, detail there so that it's just easier to maintain, really. S30B and black G10, it's a classic. Yeah. Cool little uh, addition with the green spacers. I love the fact that you know they add a little color and not make everything the same. Just giving it that little pop in your pocket. It's one of those things that if you're looking for just a little bit of different. This is it right here, guys. The Osborne 940-2. That's going to cover the Osbornes in the blue class. Like I said, we've got some automatic ones in the black class that we'll be showing in another video, but we're just covering the blue class and what we have here at Serenity. That's one family. We're going to go into another uh, staple uh, Benchmade. This is going to be the grips and the mini grips. Griptillion for uh, uh, long, basically. They don't have... I don't know if they have all of the models that we're showing actually because um, they are discontinuing most of the group tilling models i don't know if it's going to be around forever anymore at this point but this was a staple for a very long time we still have a few at the shop that you can get your hands on still a very good price for a full size or a mini knife with good materials so where do you want me to start bud we can just go there right on here starting with the mini grip tilling i'm going to try and cover the cereal 556BK-S30V. That's a long one, guys. I apologize. Mel Pardue, one of the other designers in Benchmade, probably the smallest knife I would want to carry. This is one of my favorite, not just because of the blade shape, but the bigger grip is super chunky. Love the handle on it, but this one is just perfect. It is a little small for my hand, but at the same time, this is not coming out. The grip they put on here is just so nice and so well done. Uh, the only downside I would say to this is what you covered earlier with the Osborne, is you can't really get things cleaned up. So if you have some sort of way of getting like a Q-tip or compressed air blowout, you're just gonna get it out through here. But pretty easy staple. I'll let Nico cover the, the stats again. Yeah, so blade length on this guy is 2.91 inches. Closed it is 3.87 and then open is 6.78 inches. Very pocketable. It is, we'll get to the mini bug out in a bit, but I will say before we get there, it's a little bit beefier, so it is a little bit more substantial in the hand. Mm -hmm. um, you can choke up here. I can get my whole hand on there. It's got a nice working drop point blade. It's pretty good looking. I like it. Reversible pocket clip. Yeah, and just to spend a couple of minutes on that, um, the bug out came out not too long ago yeah. after the grip tillion. Um, and what I mean by that is not too long ago recently, but after the grip tillion uh, has already kind of made it staple. I think now the bug out and the mini bug out are kind of taking the place of the workhorse. But what I will say for the benefit of the grip tillion is this not only is the handle sturdier, in my opinion, but so is the blade. The blade's just a little bit thicker, so you have a little bit more stoutness to go through things. The grind, if I'm not mistaken, is not all the way. It's more of a saber, so yeah. it's about halfway, giving you that nice thickness back here on the flats. Um, it's just one of those things that I'm, I'm a little sad with Benchmade kind of doing away with, especially the minis, because they're so great. But I understand it with the, the bug outs. I will show the rest of these variants here that we have, but you're pretty much getting all the same stats all the same uh, blade steels. The only difference here is I've got a serrated version, and I have one with the, what do we call that? The hole, the spidey hole? We don't wanna intrude uh, Yeah, it's got the little spidey hole. I don't know what people are calling it these days. I don't think anyone knows. It's just a, I call it a reverse flicking hole because that's how I use it. But it's got a sheet foot blade, so it's really good for opening packages. You don't have to lift your arm up real high. Um, great for sharpening pencils. It's just a good blade, honestly. But yeah, so they have coated, uncoated, and some semi-serrated ones. And then we got the grip tilling. Yeah, guys, just real quick with the grips, mini or full size, probably the best entry knife into Benchmade. If you're looking to get into Benchmade, you haven't gotten into it yet, 
this is probably the entry yeah. if you want to go into. If not the bug out, but this is one of those ones that's definitely going to serve you right if you get into it. So the grips, uh, uh, the mini grips and the grips, uh, that is basically what we have here at Benchmade. This one's got a nice little color on here. Which I believe this one's discontinued. Okay. Sure. But it's got the sand FRN scales with an S30B blade. This is a drop point variant coated. So these guys, the full size Griptilians are 8.707 inches long with a 3.45 inch blade and then it's closed at 4.62 inches. A little bit chunkier for sure, um, but still not that heavy, honestly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the weight is just under four ounces. If you're wearing jeans, you're not going to notice it. It's a good knife. Other than a couple of knives in the black class, and I know you heard that, this is the snappiest, this is the most sturdiest knife you'll probably put in your hands with Benchmade. This thing is durable to beat up upon all else. This is one of the coolest knives you're going to get into if you need something that's really going to do a lot of work. All right, guys, now we're on to the staple at Benchmade, the bug outs. Now, this is one of the originals. Uh, this here is going to be the full size bug out. I'll go over to Nick for the stats and anything else that we're going to miss here. Yeah, so overall stats this thing is opened at 7.46 inches, closed at 4.22, and it has a 3.24 inch blade. This is the second model they came out with. It's got the green bribery with the brass um, or gold bronze colored thumb studs and standoffs. It's got a gray coated blade and a gray pocket clip, which I really like. I like when they match the pocket clip. Yeah. Um, S30B blade, Gregory, so it's super light. It weighs 1.8 ounces. This thing disappears in your pocket, which is what I like about it, because it's super slim and super lightweight while being a full-size pocket knife. I do have a bug out. I was reluctant to buying one for a long time because of how popular they were, but then when I got one, I do really like it. And this is the second model they came out with. The original one is blue bribery with a normal satin S30B blade and blue standoffs. Um, we do have some in stock, I believe, but I forgot them. With what you said as far as getting lost in your pocket, this was one of my first bug outs. It got lost in a couch or somewhere. Uh, anyone finds it, let me know. I'll definitely give you a reward on return. Just kidding. Um, but. This is one of the staples with Benchmade. Uh, apart from the Griptilian, like I said earlier when we were covering the Griptilians, this one is, the grind's gonna be brought back a little bit more for better slice, slicing. Uh, though it is very thin, it is super durable. I've seen people baton wood and do many other things with this guy. I love the fact that they're doing different colors and variations of it. Uh, I'm a big fan of this one just because of the green and the gold. Uh, but that is one of the really, really cool things about this knife and a staple at Benchmade. We'll go ahead and cover some of the other uh, colors and variations of it. And we also have two custom ones that we have for ourselves at Serenity Knives. But without further ado, the next guy here is going to be the 535BK-2. And I'll go over to Nick for the stats. Same overall length and blade length. It's got the 3.24 inch blade with a 7.46 inch open. This one has the CF Elite scales though. So they say it's lighter and stronger. I do feel like I, it does feel a little stiffer. Um, but either way, same weight, 1.8 ounces, super lightweight. It's a cool knife, it's got the black coated. So this is their like tactical version, I guess. I don't know, if you like all black, that's definitely the model for you. So a part of these overviews, guys, is we're going to give you some uh, honest opinions, and I'm going to be a little blunt here. I don't like to, you know, sugarcoat stuff. I'm not a fan of this handle material because it's a CF Elite, meaning there's carbon fiber supposed to be in it. I don't understand nor get that in a negative way. It's just, if you're going to put carbon fiber into a handle, let that be the carbon fiber handle. Benchmade has since come out with carbon fiber models which in my mind makes this obsolete. If I want carbon fiber, I would go to the carbon fiber models. I don't know why I would want this one, especially because in my opinion, carbon fiber is a little bit more durable, right? It is pricier and I'll give them that, but I don't know if I'd buy this as far as a, a carbon fiber knife or CF, whatever. It is a cool bug out. It does follow the staple of the blue and this green one here, but if I'm gonna go and 
put a little bit more into a bug out, it's not gonna be this guy. It'll be either the aluminum, which is one of my favorite materials that Benchmade does, or the actual carbon fiber. Uh, so this guy's one of those that I feel that kind of got lost in the pack. Um, still a cool knife, but just being honest with you, if you're gonna go carbon fiber, you might as well go all the way. See if the leap doesn't make sense to me. Uh, sorry, Benchmade, but it's just one of those things that in my opinion, my opinion only, I guess, that uh, doesn't really make sense to me. I, I think they just, they got a lot of complaints about these being flexible, and so they tried to, dude, that's not even. Yeah, I mean, the, once again, I get it in a sense of you're trying to make something more durable, but if you're gonna do that, stick with that or don't come out with carbon fiber. But now that you've come out with carbon fiber, I'm a little confused. I don't know what, what you're doing here, so I'd rather just go full carbon fiber. Anyways, my rant's over. On to the next one. Yeah, so this was the second, or the third model they came out with. The fourth was the Dash 3, which is a full-size version of this. This is the Mini. I don't have the full-size here right now, but they should be on our website. It is carbon fiber with an S90V blade, blue thumb studs, and a blue back spacer which is cool because they cut the scales out so that it's more exposed. Just a nice touch. But yeah, so they came out with the carbon fiber model with S90V. It's definitely more pricey than the regular models, but better edge retention. It's lightweight, it looks good. And since you've got the mini carbon fiber one in there, let's just jump to the full size carbon fibers. These are two custom ones we have at Serenity Knives ourselves. We went ahead and decided to add a little bit more flair into the showroom. so. Without further ado, we've got a couple of the carbon fiber handles. Um, same stats as the regular bug out. The only difference I think I would say other than the carbon fibers, you're not gonna get that grip. You're not gonna get the grip that you have here. So there's there's uh, one thing in the CF Elite that you'll get if you go from CF Elite to carbon fibers. This is a little bit more smooth and slick. This is a little bit more grippy and durable. Um, but once again, if I'm going carbon fiber, I'm going all the way. And why wouldn't you? Look at that. This carbon fiber woven, it's beautiful, it's pretty. And the one that we have in blue, um, Definitely pops. It's the full size one that we have, but we've got two other ones. This one's got green back spacers and a thumb stud. This one's just straight satin. It's a little bit cleaner, very dressy. Not that that one's not what blade seals do we put on these? They're both S90. S90V. So basically the same as the full size version yeah. that they make in production, but we just put different colors on there basically. And so with these, you're going full upgrade. Handle and blade steel, um, and the carbon fiber they do, although smooth, is very, very beautiful. I like it, it adds a little flair to your pocket, and that super, super durability as well. That are gonna be the two full-size custom ones we have at Serenity Knives. Now onto my favorite, the milled aluminum. This one right here, guys, I am in love with. Not only is it red in the back spacers and the thumb stud, which is one of my favorite colors, but this is just one of those milling beautification things that they do. They've milled this T6 aluminum for this sunburst kind of pattern they've got right here, um, and it feels really good in the hand. T6 aluminum isn't a lot of people's favorite materials. It's definitely not one of mine, but with the way Benchmade does their T6 aluminum, you can't complain. I mean, it you can't. One of my favorites. I like it a lot. Yeah, and you can't complain. I'll get you, everyone can complain, but they just do a good job. Whether it's the colors they put on there or what the milling they do, it's just a very durable material. It does ding up and, and does kind of give some worn look to it, but I think that adds to the character. Yeah, my favorite thing is seeing people's Osborns that they've had for years, and it's all worn. It's, you know, the aluminum steel, the colors exposed. And they just look really cool. It looks very much that person's knife. Um, so it's kind of a shame they didn't coat these, but it will still wear a bit, take some snail snail trails. And yeah. It's a cool knife, very lightweight. It's lighter than titanium, not quite as strong, but it's it feels like metal. So that always feels nice when you're holding a, like a metal handle and it being very lightweight. This one's got an M390 blade. Thank you, I was just about to cover that. So the steel is upgraded to a sense. I'm not gonna sit here and go back and forth with if M390 and S90V are comparable, different, which one's better. We can save that for another video, but this is an upgraded steel with an upgraded handle, really beautiful backspacers and thumb studs. This is something I would think of if I wanted to get back into bug outs, this would probably be the one that I get. This is the 535BK-4. Yep, so M390 is a stainless blade, but they went ahead and coated it. 
I guess, for the look. I'm not sure. There you go. Mini bug outs. These are by far, in my opinion, the best pocket knife for the average person who isn't into pocket knives. This is just, like, you don't care about knives, this is the one to go with because it is just like the bug out, very lightweight, completely disappears in your pocket, but if you need it, you have it. It's an access lock, so ambidextrous, your hand is never in the way, so it's safe for people who aren't super familiar with knives. Great drop point blade. These also, like the full size, come in S30V with Gregory, and this is the this is the first one they came out with. It's orange gravery with orange standoffs and barrel spacers. Um, so it's good for hunting, maybe if you're out there in the woods. Not just that, I'm not a huge orange fan, but Benchmade does pretty good with their colors. The thumb studs just beautiful. This is something I wish they would have done with the bug out though, because I lost mine. Yeah. And if I had something in orange, I'd have spotted that damn thing right out the gate. But it's lost, I don't know where it's at. I mean, you lose that in the forest, you're not gonna be able to find that probably, especially close. I, uh, I would love for someone to lose this in the woods and then be able to find it, that'd be kind of cool, unless you have like a metal detector. But this guy stands out, so you lose him, which makes sense, they went smaller, it's okay, we need this guy to pop so that way we don't lose him so often. But I love it, I'm not an orange fan, but this orange is nice. The backspacer, the thumb stud are beautiful. It's got that shiny metallic orange yeah. to it. And just like Nick said, great everyday carry. I think you even have one yourself, a mini bug out. Yeah, um, the second model they came out with was the black and white one. So I actually tricked it out some titanium scales, right which is another thing I love about the bug out and another reason I advocate it as the best pocket knife for the average person because if you want to make it unique, there's tons of people out there making aftermarket parts. You can soup it up, make it look however you like. It's just a great little knife. Yeah, and um, you said you started out with this guy, right? Yeah. The so storm. what I'll what I'll say with this guy, um, I don't know if he gets lost in the woods or not as well, but this guy gets dirty. White gets dirty. So if you're one of those guys that beats up on your knife, that gets your hands dirty, when you put your hands on this, if you like the wear, if you like the look of stuff getting worn in, that's what it will do. If you don't, this is probably not your guy. Otherwise, do like Nick, get you some upgraded scales, some cooler features to it. Um, great knife, cool uh, look to it, kind of that Stormtrooper, Star Wars-esque kind of look to it, but this stuff gets dirty, guys. We've got to constantly clean. But to that point, when I first got mine, because we do this fairly frequently, we will take the white mini bug outs and dye them with red dye, a bunch of different cool colors. So they did me a cotton candy, it was like pink and blue. So I had that for a while um, until I bought the titanium scales for it because I just kind of, I don't like feeling the burr on the inside of the grivery. But it is a cool knife, super lightweight, it's awesome. But check the website for our uh, rib dive ones, they do look really cool. He dies them, they come out awesome. So the orange is the 533, white is 533 BK-1. And we are missing, the third model of the, of the mini bug out that came out, which was the CF Elite version. So it's just like this, just that size. And with my comments on the CF Elite bug out, I have the same ones on the mini bug out. Um, so not much you're missing there. We're, we didn't bring them, but we will cover them later. The last mini bug out, last bug out for, uh, and last night for the blue class is gonna be the 533-3. This has got the carbon fiber, which I'm a fan of, not the CF Elite and the beautiful metallic blue backspacer along with the thumb stud. Now before Nick gets into this, I'm a huge fan of this backspacer. Not only does it get the same purpose of that lanyard hole, but for me, even though you have carbon fiber, the durability. The durability here on this back is allowing for very little to no flex. And I'll just kind of see if I can give you, that's got a little bit more while that has almost nothing. Um, I love the fact that they did this with the full size and the mini. It's just one of those things that if you're gonna go carbon fiber, go all the way. The way this is woven just looks so beautiful. And the only drawback I would say is if you're gonna lose it, you need something to identify it. Other than that, great knife. Yeah, and I don't think I gave you all the stats on the mini bug out. So this is 6.49, so six and a half inches long, open and closed, it's 3.7 and then the blade length is 2.82. So just under three inches for those who are in the States where they don't like three inch blades and over. 
Um, I know California still probably can't carry this or something. I don't know, but it's a great knife. Yep. With that said, guys, let me wrap this up. I'm going to start with the laws. In Texas, there's really no knife laws. So the knives we're going to cover are going to be a full wider range. Yeah. Your state are going to have different laws. Your states are going to have different, you know, kind of rules on what you can carry, what you can't carry, mechanisms and not. Maybe that'll be a video we'll be able to get into one day to talk about the different states and their laws. But for right now, we know in Texas, there isn't any on bladed weapons that got yanked out of the law books back in 1718. And so everything we're here showing is legal in Texas, legal to sell in Texas and legal to carry in Texas. So without further ado guys, that is the blue class. We've got plenty other knives to show you. We're gonna hopefully get this bunched in. And as other knives come in, we don't have some of them. I know you're asking, what's up with the shootout? What's up with some of the other knives? I just named one, but that aren't in here. We will cover them as we get them in. Right now, we just yanked all the knives we knew we had in our shop, in our showroom, to show you all of these. And as they come individually to us, we'll be able to cover those. We're just playing catch up right here, guys. So we appreciate you joining us for today. We've got another video with the hunt and gold class, along with the black class, following these two. Make sure you're liking, make sure you're subscribing. Any comments, improvements you guys feel like we can do, please put them out there so we can continue to interact with you guys. We appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace.